Now, here comes the music. Good evening, everyone. It is Bucky with the DJ Roundtable. It is Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. Yep, and it's another wonderful week. We are, uh, oh, here comes Mike James. Another wonderful week of lots of stuff going on. Uh, just had uh, my first weekend off for Tracy and I in a long time. And I can tell you how enjoyable it was. Uh, it was very, very nice to have uh, time off from all these weddings. And, um, I, you know, hey, Mike. Oh, we're connecting the audio still. There we go. Uh, hey, what's up, Mike? How are we doing tonight? We the only ones on right now? Right now, yeah. Um, all right. Well, sounds good. How was your wind? Hold on one second. I'm answering back. You know uh, who DJ Unstoppable is? Um, DJ I don't know. I know Nathan. I know Nathan. I, well, I don't know. I, I think I'm friends with them or I'm following them on YouTube or something. Yep. There's Matt. I was going to have DJ Unstoppable starting to join us here. Unfortunately, he is unable to join tonight. So. He had uh, some uh, personal matters he got to take care of, so no big deal. But I asked mm -hmm. him to uh, come join uh, the show because uh, I know uh, him and uh, Matt know each other for, very well, and uh, he's a real nice guy. Uh, he's also another California DJ, and uh, he has a, a okay. great YouTube channel as well. And if, you, and if you guys are tuning in here on Twitch and watching on Twitch, uh, don't forget, everyone here has a YouTube channel, and those YouTube uh, channels, I do link them in the description on YouTube. On here on Twitch, if you have a question or something about like that, you can always ask. Well, I'll put the links into the chat. Uh, but yes, if you uh, are here watching live, which we have the show live every Tuesday on Twitch, and if you're watching it on YouTube, you're watching it, the recording, the week after. Um, and that's not a bad thing. Just make sure you follow everyone else here on social media. And again, you go over to Twitch, you follow me on Twitch. This is where I broadcast a show from on Twitch. You can then see when we broadcast and join live and ask questions in the chat. But don't forget to click, if you're on YouTube, click like, subscribe, and put comments down below. Criticism, comments. Whatever critiques, put them down below. You know, we're all here to uh, try and answer as many questions we possibly can, and it's always greatly appreciated. Uh, DJ Mike James and DJ Solsis. Um, I know uh, we got a few other people going to be joining us uh, in a little bit, hopefully uh, sooner than later. But uh, again, th this is one of the things that, you know, we are all have lives and I try to pick the most easy night to do stuff on Tuesdays, but we all have stuff going on between customer meetings uh, and personal stuff going on with friends, friends and family. So I, you know, I appreciate everyone coming here. Matt, we missed you, dude. I can't tell you, bro. I missed you for the past couple of weeks. Uh, James, Mr. Mike James, again, I can't thank you enough for being here as well. Uh, I know uh, I asked uh, Nathan to come in too. He sent me a message. I didn't get a chance to see that one. And Abe, I'm hoping that hopefully he'll be able to come in later as well. Uh, but to answer your question, I had a nice quiet weekend this past weekend because it was my first weekend off. Tracy and I had our weekend off in a long time. So we actually didn't have a wedding this past weekend. Uh, but I do have a meeting tomorrow with a customer. Um, and him and his fiance were meeting tomorrow. For November the 20, 26th of November, the Saturday after Thanksgiving, they didn't hire a DJ. So they need a DJ. Um, one thought the other one hired. And, Sweet, 
That's why live We're pulling those late season weddings. Hey, you know, uh, it's fine. Does it, we'll still take care of them. Uh, just a hell, I could, heavy use, I could use a couple. Of, I hey, could I use mean, a couple. Of them. Matt has given right. himself number one. Matt, you uh, are number one. We don't we don't have seasons here in California. I've got seven weddings this month. Uh, five yeah, in yeah. five in November, three in January, five in February. I mean, it's it doesn't stop. It's You're just bragging now. <laughs> we don't have snow. We don't have uh, at least not in SoCal. We don't have snow or intense cold or anything. And unless you go up in the mountains, well, I, I mean, I grew up in South Texas, so I, I mean, I get it, but I do like the seasons. Yeah, it started. It got cold today. It's been like in the sixty-ish. Oh, that's so cold. That's Ooh, cold for burr. us. Sixty degrees. Burr. Put on a jacket. I think, I think it was warmer here today. Yeah, it got to seventy degrees uh, up here in the Chicagoland area. Um, so I, I can't complain about that. I'm sure, Mike, you you enjoyed because being central and a couple hours south of me, I'm sure you had some nice weather. Probably maybe a little bit warmer than us because usually yeah, it, it was beautiful. I was out working on my wife's car, doing some body work, and getting that stuff done, and paint her out. There you go, man. Yeah, and you know that's it, it's 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 great. That's me paying her back for all that all that work on those scrims, you know. Hey, I, I we'll talk about those in a little bit because I I got I got to talk that I got to talk about that. But uh, the cool thing with Matt, especially with the outdoor ve venues, I've seen some of your videos on YouTube, and I can't tell you, wow, you you got some banging stuff going on there, man. It, it, it's it, it's really really cool that we have going on in uh, SoCal there. Um, I, I could say that some of the weddings I've seen on YouTube, the videos, the gig logs you put up there. Very, very, very cool, dude. Very cool. I'm, I'm watching him. I'm like, and I, I, I the one thing, one critique I have, I've said it before, that DJ horn. I hate that horn. <laughs> <laughs> I know you love it. You go black and white. You look up, and horn comes on. It's like, ah, uh, it's like I, I have uh, to. It's it's my signature thing. You know, now I, I every signature thing. I have my little overlay now that like I just copy and paste the effect like every time it's gig log filter horn title <laughs> yeah. Same every time I, I try to I don't know I, I take a little from everybody I, I took some from uh, I don't know if you ever remember DJ Lixer this uh, she was from Detroit this uh, female DJ and she always had that that air horn effect and so I always I adopted that from her plus I use that a lot in all my like that's my number one sample that I use that the siren um, <laughs> I've got a couple of like boom effects like DJ Bar uses. I don't use those as much though, because by the time I'm in the middle of the mix, I can't figure out which which sample is on which button on which pad. I just press. I, I know. Where, I, you wait, know, it's wait, wait, wait. You ha you have the you have the software down pat to that you can look at a button. It will do it for you. And you're telling me you can't remember. I can't remember which button's which. I know my, my horn. My horn is assigned to a separate button that's on my controller that I MIDI mapped. And my DJ Solsta sample is assigned to uh, my number pad six because I can only do five cue points. So I have six as my DJ Solstice drop, seven and eight are fast forward and rewind, or rewind and fast forward. But then on the sample bank, when I press the sample bank button, those four I have samples for, but I can never remember which one is which. And that that's 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 always a fun thing knowing what's going on out there. And then my you know my knowing my dumbass, I'd forget to press hot cube button back. And so when I press the button <laughs> to start the song, all of a sudden there's a sample, and I'm just like, that's why like I hardly, I very very rarely use a crossfader uh, because I would not remember to put it back. I use the fader. I, I always use a crossfader because when I, I learned how to DJ, it was on records on vinyl, and if you didn't use a crossfader. You know, it was harder to do stuff, especially beat matching, because you're you're basically inching over to crossfader to to get that beat match right and listening to it, and then you get it over and you go way over. You know, it just you know it's one of the things that I always use. Even here when I here on Twitch, I, I was on here DJing earlier today. I did an hour and a half set. You know, I use it. You can see the crossfaders moved over because I use that crossfader. Because that doesn't have any faders though. <laughs> I use the figures a lot. It has it has rotators. You know, it's again the basic ninety nine dollar. But even my even my Pioneer XZ, um, I use the crossfader. My SX two crossfader. My nine hundred Nexus mixer for my CEJs, crossfader. It's always been crossfader. 
uh, my denim stuff, always crossfader. Uh, I, I use a crossfader every once in a while because with my software, you can apply a filter to the crossfader. So when you go from one song to the next, it'll automatically apply a high pass mm -hmm. or a low pass filter into that song. So it'll automatically filter out while it's crossfading over. So I'll use that every once in a while. Yeah. Only thing is like your software, unfortunately, does not have stems. Right. And that, that's that been really, that's really cool because this past weekend, uh, the wedding I have next weekend is the first weekend that they had their schedule. We can align with them. And we sat down and they wanted a song, but they want instrumental version of the song. And with stems, just took out the vocals. They're like, oh, yeah, that works. So the song they're going to have is the original song. Just the vocals are gone. The backing track is still there. Backing vocals are still there, but it's, it's a background. So it's not as heavy. And it's they're going to probably have 30 seconds of the song because it's a song for the groom and the officiant to walk in and down the aisle to the uh, the altar. But it, it's 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 pretty cool. It stems what you can do with it. You know, take it out hi hats, take it out, you know, and uh, take it out bass, take it out vocals. And that, that's, that's a really cool thing that um, I'm glad that Virtual DJ uh, started doing stems. And um, I know that a few manufacturers are working on stems hard into their into their equipment using their software so we'll see where, where it goes with this because maybe one day you'll be able to pull fully pull apart a whole entire song every single track and decide what part of that track you want to play for that song and maybe be able to pull out the back vocals or pull out you know whatever and uh do that so uh wow you're at tv now you're on christmas lights man man you're all over the place the stems are the stems are cool um I wanted to tell you, so here, here's what I finally decided. So I, I've played around with those Art 945s over the past month. Um, I don't think they're worth the $1,800 each that they are. Okay. So I'm able to return them to Zounds. One of them actually came, uh, it's not really damaged, but it has like one of the grills that looks like it was grabbed by a machine to where like the lip of it curves over just at like maybe an inch. And uh, so I'm able to return that one for free and I'll just pay the return shipping for the other, but I'm able to return those for a full refund. Um, but basically, yes. Yeah, so they, I don't think they sound as good as they should for an $1,800 speaker. They sound great, but they're extremely painful to hear at high volumes. Um, and so I returning those using the Mackies in the meantime, my Yamaha's for bigger events. And I got the EAW 12 inch version of the speaker that I loved. Um, since I returned the 15s, uh, the 12s are coming in December. Those will be my mains. Um, but in terms of subs, I returned the Bass Boss 15 because it was too small. It wasn't loud enough. Um, really? Sounded good. It, sounded, it sounds good in an enclosed room uh, out in the open. It And not only that, it moves like on its own what the bass hits. Like I had to put like a drawer liner underneath it to prevent it from like moving around. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it sounded good. So I liked it, but I got that from Guitar Center. I didn't like it enough, so I returned that. I tried the RCF 8004, which is the single version of the double 18 that I'm getting. That just isn't doesn't quite cut it either. Um, the bass the bass on the bass boss, like sound wise, sounds incredible. Um, overall loudness out of that 15 is not gonna cut it for a large event. So I tried the RCF. Um, also not not quite cutting it. So I'm returning the RCF. That one came damn. They, FedEx literally dropped it off the back of the truck. It's a 130 pound package and it came with a giant gash in the side of the wood, uh, chips everywhere, grill was dented. And so I'm like, well, it's a, it's a free return. Either I'm going to return it for a replacement. If, it, if I like it, if not, whatever, I can return it. No problem. So returning that and getting the base boss 18 inch sub. And hopefully that should be the last sub that I buy. It's just been a, it's been a wrap. You know what, what it is, is I should have never sold my KW 181s because I haven't found anything that's even remotely as good as that since. Um, I still think like, the, I, cause I was the first one to buy the 118s, the next thing up from the 181s. And those are the worst subs QSC's ever made. And they sound horrible. Um, they're, yeah, they're terrible subs. And a lot of people, some people what agree. Your some don't. 21s? What were your uh, that's the thing is, that's the thing is I wanted like the small base boss sub to bring to like small to medium size events and then dual dual 18 because the dual 18 will fit under my table behind my facade. Uh, the dual 21 will not. It's too big. So um, 
when now the latest on the dual 20, the dual 18s is late November. So the window is getting smaller and smaller. First it was January, then it was June, then it was October. Now it's November. So we'll see. Um, but well, hopefully my audio, my audio will be, I'm trying to get the audio just like dialed in and find what I like at the price point I like and keep it. Maybe you need to go from a six foot table and eight foot table and bigger, bigger, uh, Scrim. I don't even. I don't even have a six. I have a five foot table. It's an adjustable oh. height five foot table, non folding in the middle because folding tables always sag in the middle. So this one is an adjustable height five foot table, single piece. Just get an eight foot regular eight foot table, and that way you have a eight whole table. Eight foot table's too big. I, I use a facade, not a tablecloth. And my facade, well, my facade. Get a bigger perfect facade, perfect. Then. Get, get, no. get like a ten foot facade, and that way <laughs> you can have your your dual twenty one or anything at every single event. It could be a birthday party for a five-year-old <laughs> with 20 people. You have your dual 21, boom, just pound it. Them. Would, it, would, it, would it, would, it would sound good, wouldn't it? No, I don't I don't like the the I like my Rockville facade and uh it's perfect size to where it fits the five foot table and two speaker stands, and I get that like you know nice clean look, yes. Look. Yeah, yeah. That's so one thing I could I could I could do a six, I could do a six foot table, but again. I don't like the folding tables in the middle because they always seem to sag under any sort of weight. And See, I just I, I, can't do that. because I have a because I have my sprinter, I don't have a folding table, you know, as far as in the center. It's a full mm -hmm. six foot um, oh, yeah, yeah. a like lifetime a or whatever. It's one of the bigger companies that make yeah. the plastic tables with the metal legs. Um and I have you just sit it's on the side wall of my van with my uh, DJ booth. And our high boy, just because uh, I have a Z track on the side of the wall of the van, and I have it, you know, a um, uh, a ratchet strap that holds it down on the side. So it, it's one of the things that you know I'm 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 able to have that. That and I have a little four, I have a little three foot uh, card table that I have to set up sometimes for for ceremonies and put a tablecloth down and do whatever. See, like me personally, I'm not a fan for facades because I've seen it too many times and your BFF uh, DJ bar had to happen with the girls falling on it and falling through it. I just feel that people think it's, it's a wall and three people would put weight on there. I'm like, Oh no, 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 don't. Yeah. Yeah. And, that happens. Yeah. I, so I'm, I, I try to stay away from facades. Speaking I try to stay. I watched, I watched bars video where they fell into it. Yeah. And speaking of uh, great uh, setups, I don't know if you saw it, Matt, but Mike here, uh, him and his wife got together and they took um, their old scrims and he made some new scrims for his uh, uh, his two um, uh, stands. And for the Halloween party they had, they made they made a they took uh, the scrim for their table and he took the scrims for the stands and they made with black felt like little hands come out of the ground and stuff like that, little bats and made a huge pumpkin face. For the front display for their Halloween party they were doing DJing this past weekend. And I felt that look really, really cool because no one else really has that. And when he when he showed me some pictures of it, black backlit red, backlit white, and it just looked really, really cool. So Mike, how did that go for the party? What did what did what happened with the party? How what did the kids think? Oh, it was, it was awesome, man. It, I mean, like I said, those are the funnest events because like I said, I'm at a junior high, you know, I mean, I, I don't, I don't pull those gigs very often, you know what I mean? But uh, when I do, they're super fun. I mean, I, we probably had 80 kids there and then my wife and I made some, uh, I mean, we, we made some, you know, accent stuff for our scrims, like, like the zombie hands coming out of the ground or wrapping my totems. And then we did like haunted house and ghosts and like a pumpkin face. And, and we magneted it all to our scrims. Those are all my new scrims. And then the zombie hands, we ended up using elastic. So they're just elastic around the, around the bottom of the totems. So, Hey, if you get a chance, check out that video because it is actually super cool. Like I said, we'll, we'll probably do more, next year you know what i mean like like because we can reuse all that stuff you know what i mean oh, None yeah. Of it. oh yeah yeah it's all it's all made it's all ready to go so we'll, we'll be able to add to it for next year halloween so that's gonna that's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun because i think we're just gonna keep building our repertoire of these types of uh 
applications for, for the different events because no one's, you know, like I said, no one's filling the need for scrim design or totem design for these specialized events. And that, that's the thing is that taking the initiative and designing that and putting that onto uh, your equipment and making that with the felt across the bottom, a little like zombie hands come out of the ground and, you know, little bats and stuff. It's just little touches like that people see and they're like, oh, hey, that's cool. But it's different from other people in your market. And I'm sure that oh, absolutely. You know, other DJs, even up here, I, I really have really not seen that. I've seen people take like, go to like the Halloween store and take like, you know, stuff that's designed for a window and put it on like on stuff because, you know, it's your uh, plastic or it's, you know, um, that like cling wraps kind of stuff that you could put onto things and right. you know it doesn't look great especially backlit it's like yeah it kind of looks cheap but that right there really had a nice contrast to it it really looked nice the picture you sent me and uh again i can't wait to see uh the the video for it i haven't got a chance to but i will be watching that video on youtube it, it's it's really really cool um uh, yeah, so, I was going to say, you, you hadn't commented. You hadn't commented on my video yet, so I'm assuming you hadn't watched it. No, I haven't got a chance to be busy. Uh, yesterday, we were Halloween, and Sunday, we were, we were running around. We, we had meetings all weekend, um, and then we had to uh, do other things. So we we're off, but we, you know, from gigs, but not off from the business. And yesterday, we had Fair. Halloween, and we had our granddaughter over, and trick-or-treaters, and all the fun stuff, and then uh, today I'm just trying to catch up on just basic paperwork. And actually, uh, here here's something uh, I'm going to my next subject I'm going to touch on. Uh, far as for 2023, Matt, are you signed up for some wedding shows? Um, probably. Um, I mean, I'm not as of now, but I have them on my calendar as pending uh, to keep the dates open. So there's one. There's see that the problem is there's there's three main companies here. There's there's Bride World, which has been around forever. Um, there's another one called Premier Bridal, which is family run. Um, and then there's another giant conglomerate called ACS, which does them countrywide. Yes, American they do it here too. Shows. And those those are the best by far um, because they have thousands and thousands of dollars to put into marketing. So those are always attended by a thousand plus brides and or more, it, I have a huge lead list of like almost a hundred every after each of those shows the other ones are a little bit more niche bride world is more it's more expensive so it's for brides that are seriously like in the booking process I get a lot more conversions out of that premier bridal is more for the brides that are they want to win free shit because each one of their shows has like free prizes and a fashion show and uh you know free giveaways and all sorts of stuff so you don't get as many people that are serious they're more like oh we're looking you know I'll, I'll follow up they'll say oh yeah we're looking around we really loved your stuff we'll reach out once we have you know our venue booked and so like you know i i try to reach out like maybe a month or so later but i don't you know if they reach out great if not so i mean i have i'll probably do the bride world one and that the other problem is premiere and bride world have a the same like a show on the same day which is stupid uh, so I don't know what's going to happen. I'll probably do the bride world cause it's closer. Um, and then ACS usually does theirs in March. So I'll probably do that one too, but I don't, I don't know. Uh, I like the wedding shows, but they're a lot of work. And I mean, it, sometimes it seems like it's not worth it to book one wedding, two weddings, like financially sure, but sanity wise, no, because I'm, you know, not getting back till 12 at night, the night before. And then I got to go at seven eight in the morning to go set up and be ready by 10 or 11 o'clock like and and we bring the photo booth and we bring the truss and the flower backdrop and the neon signs like we bring a lot and uh you know it's a nice booth but it takes a lot of time and, and effort and you're on your feet all day and you're doing the same pitch over and over again and you have your promo video playing in the background and that stupid song gets stuck in your head non-stop i mean it's <laughs> i don't know I, your, own song, your own song that you picked gets stuck in your head yeah, so I'm going to make a new promo video in December here, probably, and then uh, we'll see. I've got I've got 30, 31 weddings for next year already, so I, I, I'm, I'm at a better place than I was coming into 2022, so uh, we'll see where we're at come 
end of the year. Um, but we also, I also increased my prices like 500 bucks for each package to be, you know, way more in line of what I, my parents went to a wedding in North Carolina and the DJ had, you know, two evolves and a couple of like Revo light, like old ass, you know, American DJ lights, just not a nice setup. And it was, they, they said that they paid for the DJ, they paid $3,000. It went to the hotel. So I'm sure the DJ didn't get all that, but, um, you know, he's create what I try to market myself as is we create an environment and like a feeling on the dance floor to where you don't want to leave. We don't just have people, you know, moving and bobbing around to some music and some lights going off. Like we create a full on experience and show on the dance floor that like hardly any other company in this area offers. Um, it's kind of like what DJ Bar does, where it's like you feel the energy like right there on the dance floor. And it's like people just no matter what aren't going to leave. Uh, so I try to market that to clients and, and looking at my pricing, I'm like, like we should be charging more. And so that's just what I'm doing. So we're, I I'm trying it out. I'm using my old pricing for Fridays and Sundays and the new way more expensive pricing for Saturdays, because I know I'll fill those Saturdays anyway. So, you know, now's the time to kind of try it out. And, so, and so Matt, you here, here's of, a question for you. Mm -hmm. If you worked at a place, let's say you're working at, I'm going to, I'm going to use a, a fast food restaurant just because it's, it's convenient. I'm going to say in and out Burger because that's out there by you guys out in California. And you were the manager there in and out Burger and you're getting paid by the hour. You're an hourly manager. So you're like a shift manager. And in and out Burger said, hey, on Fridays or on Sundays when you work your shift, instead of getting paid $25 an hour or $20 an hour, we're going to pay you $10 an hour. You would say okay to that? No, <laughs> that's what you're doing when you when you discount. This is the way I look at it. if you discount your services because of what day of the week it is. It's telling customers that you don't value the price you put on your service. And I know the work you put into it and the work that comes out of it and what happens at those weddings. And I would definitely would say that I would not discount for Friday and Saturdays a weekday wedding maybe if it was like really super small, like, you know, 30 people in a backyard, you know, one speaker and no ceremony and they want to do nothing whatsoever. It's more of a party, you know, just, Hey, ladies and gentlemen, here's a bride and groom. That's it. Versus everything else. I, I would definitely would, would probably do that. Yeah. yeah you know, it's a, I, I try to like, but my, my thing is also is I'd rather be working on a Sunday, even if it's at a discounted rate, just not at, you know, obviously it's still have to make sense. But, but again, it, it, is, is it worth going out? Is it, what's your cost to go out? That's the other thing too. You need to know your cost. If it's actually cost you money to go out, then it, it's, you're, you're basically working for free and it's, it be, you become a charity basically. So that's the other thing is know what your cost is. You know, I, I see you guys all, oh, I got to work, I got to work. I understand that we all have to work. But the thing is that, you know, a $300 gig may not, you're not making $300 because you got factors in there. You got to factor in your time, your music, your insurance, wear and tear on a vehicle, you know, all those things that you do, or I'm sorry, your whip, as you like to call your, your towel, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you, all those things you have to do and get ready. Plus his bucket. Yep. If you have if you have employees you have to pay for, uh, new equipment you got to buy, so forth, so on. And here's another thing to think about is, and Brian S. Wright has talked about this before, uh, when you go out, you're basically kind of, you got to figure out kind of like a, a rental fee for your equipment. You're buying these subwoofers, you buy a dual 21, an 18, whatever it is, it's $1,000, $2,000, $3,000. Whatever those speakers are, whatever those stuff is, Every single time it goes out, you're basically want to pay them down. You want to say, okay, fine, great. I need it costs three thousand dollars for these two speakers, or four thousand dollars for these two speakers. All right, fine, great. If they go out, I need to break even. I need to pay them off in twenty shows, in twenty weddings or twenty events. They go out. That's going to be paid off. Well, twenty divided by two thousand. Or four thousand. That is what you charge for, like a rental fee, just for those items. So that's the thing is that I always look at what my cost is, and that's one of the big factors for me is pricing. And 
right now with pricing with with and you know fuel and, and gasoline has come down in price it's still up there you know it's 499 a gallon for diesel here i know diesel out there in california is much more money it's like you know over six close to seven but still six to, uh five dollars a gallon for diesel uh and my, again the, the van is very very economical to run i get you know 24 25 miles to the gallon on my van no problem but the thing is, it still costs fuel like we did a wedding not just past weekend, uh, the weekend uh, before, uh, it was a Friday and Saturday. Friday wedding, I was up in Racine, Wisconsin, two and uh, quarter hours away at 200 mi- over 200 miles back and forth. And it's one of the things that great venue, nice staff, great couple. But I went through between that wedding and then I had another wedding kind of closer, 30 minute ride away. I went through two thirds of a tank of fuel driving those two weddings and I had filled up and it was, you know, I went to the, uh, went to the pump, $70 for fuel. So it, it's one of the things that I always got to look at what the cost is. And that's why I'm like, I, I don't believe in discounting because again, if, if you're, if your employee came to you and say, Hey, you know, if you want to work, you know, you can get paid, you know, X amount of dollars. But if you want to work these days, you can get paid more. It's not like overtime. It's not like, you know, extra fee. But like you said, you don't have a off season kind of for wedding versus right. here. It, we we kind of do, you know, the fall where there's not as many weddings or events, but they're still there. It's just that they're not as many because people with bad weather, uh, holidays, they, you know, they don't want to plan stuff around there. But the other thing is that when you do have something, you, again, you got to do what's best for your business. Uh, you want to discount it. I, I would say I would keep everything the same price. Now, if someone comes to you and says, hey, you know, again, I'm doing a backyard party or a backyard wedding. I'm doing a ceremony at the ch- uh, church or I'm going down to the Justice of Peace down to the city hall or a court and getting married. We're having a reception. We're not doing any kind of dances. All we want to do is be introduced. We're having cocktail. We're having dinner. And we want four or five hours just to party and have fun. That right there is different than a normal standard wedding. And that right there, you can say, okay, hey, you know what? You're not doing as much. It's less work for me. I have no problem giving you a discount. But if someone's going to have you run through all the ringers on a Friday or Saturday, it's the same amount of work. Why not get paid the same amount of money? That's the way I look at it. Right. You know, I, 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 you know, again, you guys, you, Mike, Nathan, everyone else, it, anyone can do what they want to do. It's, it's your business. At the alt, at the end of the day, you as a business owner have to decide what is best for your business. And that's why I look at my business and go, okay, fine, great. What is best for me? And I don't mind staying home because I have enough business to keep my, you know, my business afloat. I don't mind staying home if someone's going to want me to be very cheap. Uh, I just got a, a request through the knot of someone asking for a, uh, you know, a bid on a wedding that they're having a mariachi band coming during dinner, you know, and they asked, do you charge during that time of mariachi? Yeah. yeah. Because I'm still there. Absolutely. I'm, there. I'm I mean, still I there. Music, but if the band doesn't show up, if something happens to the band, they go take a break for 15 minutes or someone wants to make a speech or something. Well, who are they going to turn to? They're going to turn to me. So it's stuff like that. that I'm like, no, I'm I'm still there. I'm still working. It's still, you know, it, it's just like a, you talk. You told a cab driver, hey, wait here for me. I'm gonna, I'm going to go have dinner. They're going to charge you the time they're sitting there. They'll sit there and wait, but they're going to charge you that time sitting there, just like if you were driving down the street with them. So it's kind of the same thing. It, it's it's one. I, I just don't believe in uh, kind of working for free. Yeah. Do you, when you travel, cause I, I don't charge any travel fees if it's within Orange County, but um, you know, if I have to go to LA or San Diego, I usually throw in like a hundred bucks or something like that extra, but I feel like I should raise it to like two or 300 because the amount of time that I have to take and leave earlier and sit in traffic and then drive home at the end of the night. I mean, do you charge like the, the government rate or whatever it is per mile for, for distance or, or how do you, or do you build well, it? The price? Because I have a vehicle that's so for the Plus business. that LA traffic, right? Yeah. Charge them next to. <laughs> LA traffic, you must charge, you got charged my grand for LA traffic. <laughs> yeah, I know. 
uh, if, you but, leave it, if you leave it, if you leave it 10 a.m. from where I live, you can get there in, in an hour, hour and a half, no problem. You can get there by 4.30. <laughs> Try to leave anytime after 2, 2.30, you hit nothing but traffic going north because everybody, a lot of people work in Orange County and live in L.A. County uh, and not vice versa. So if you're trying to go north in the afternoon, there's always traffic. But if you're Which I'm trying to go north I'm surprised morning, with that because... Not it's sound bad. L- L.A. is so expensive. L.A. County and L.A. is so expensive to live. It's, I don't know how expensive L- Orange County is if it's cheaper well, than a lot of people LA live County. on the fringes of Orange County in places like uh, La Habra or Buena Park or Orange or places that are like right on the border of L.A. and Orange County. But they're a lot cheaper because they're North Orange County. Um, so North Orange County, a lot of people live in North Orange County and work in places like here, Mission Viejo or Irvine or wherever, um, just because this is where a lot of the companies are, like in Irvine especially, but a lot of people can't afford to live down here. So um, yeah, and it's only, I mean, it's ridiculously expensive to live anywhere in California. Well, that's some at Southern California, LA area, it's outrageously expensive because you can get a, like my house here where I'm at in suburban Chicago, it's like, you know, 200 and, We'll, we'll say $250,000 for my house. I'll throw that number out there and say, okay, it's $250,000. This similar house, I have a ranch. This similar house in LA, it's like a million bucks. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're in LA, it, it, it's it's crazy out there how the expensive the real estate is. So you know, people got to do what they got to do. But I would definitely would say if you're traveling and travel with the expense of fuel in California, and all the time you have to spend in traffic, I definitely would say a fee for travel is not out of the question. Now, do I charge it? No, because the fact that I really watch how far I go. If they're asking for something pretty crazy away, and you're building, you're building that into your price already. It is, and I I, I factor that in. So I factor in, you know, going to and from a wedding. I average, I say $25 per wedding for fuel. So when I figure my cost per wedding, my cost per wedding is $700 or $800 is my, uh, is my cost to walk out the door. And that is a fuel fee, at least $25. Now, sometimes it's less, sometimes it's more. But with the price of fuel have gone up at that right there at $25, it's less and less and less. So if I have two weddings, one wedding, you know, four blocks away, which I just had a wedding this summer, which was four blocks away, a, a venue right by me, that right there, I still had $25 factor in for fuel, but it covered the wedding I just went to this past Friday because I did more than $25 for the fuel going there and back. And then the wedding the next day was probably about $20 of fuel. So that $5 goes for the day before. So it's, it all evens out a little bit, you know, mostly maybe a little bit extra, but I much have a little bit extra than not enough. And again, it's one of those things that if I was going really far away, like we did a wedding in Iowa, the couple paid for our hotel room and they paid for, you know, our, they paid for food. So if it wasn't for that, I would have charged them for hotel and then food and then travel expenses. But because they, they picked that up, I'm like, okay, fine, great. I'm not going to charge you fuel for fuel. And, you know, it was, it was, it was. Aren't those your like, travel you know, expenses bucks. or hotel and your food and your fuel? Yeah. Well, yeah, isn't you're going, I'm going. Isn't to that travel Iowa. expense? I mean, that is the travel expenses, right? I mean, yeah. If, if I'm going, if I'm going to, you know, well, tolls is another part. We have, you know, the toll roads up here, which you don't have in Central. Oh, Ohio. yeah. Oh yeah, the, the tolls are. You have to include tolls anywhere I go in the Chicago area. I got tolls. I got to pay. You know, they the Illinois, they sent me a bill last time. Authority, I was up there. Yeah, Illinois Tollway Authority. They want their money. So, you know, I I can't tell you how many times I go through in a month. Uh, we get down to ten dollars. Tracy puts in like twenty dollars in, into the Illinois Tollway Authority, and before you know it, you know, again we get down to like it's like nine dollars and some change. The, the you know it's it's sending her an email. She puts $20 in, you know, within a couple of weeks, it's gone, you know, and that's just because of the fact that way it is for us to move around up here, out in the Western Burbs, you know, where we're at, it's, you know, I have all toll roads around me. I, if I, unless I want to take regular service streets and, you know, get anywhere, you got to do a toll road. 
So it, it's one of the things, again, it, it, I would say, Matt, yeah, I would definitely would say if that's, that's for your case, that's one of the things you want, you need to charge. I would say no problem charging a three or $400 charge because again, gasoline in California was it's, it's $6 a gallon. It's it's four ninety nine now. Well, okay, nine. five dollars. <laughs> five dollars a gallon for gas. Well, here's a, here's another thing. I, do you guys do this? Like I I actually build in time on my contracts for setup and teardown. That's all. You guys do price. that also. Yep that that that's time that's time you're working. Mm -hmm. If your employer told you, uh, you know, hey Mike, you know, again, I'm, I have a restaurant. I have uh, you know, Buddy's uh, House of uh, Burgers. And I say, hey, uh, Mike, I need you to come in at, you know, at, at four o'clock in the afternoon, work to midnight. And uh, I need you to prep, you know, the hamburgers, and, you know, foreign patties and cut fries in the back for like the first hour and a half. That's still work. I hate this job, buddy. I quit. Oh, I'm sorry. Well. <laughs> I quit. Again, I, I, would, I would have, I would I'm pay you. be a DJ. You can cook your own burgers. <laughs> This job sucks. We're gonna go be a DJ. Yeah. You're cool. You're cool. You're F cool. You, you suck. You're cool. I'm, I'm out of here. <laughs> but you know, you get, you get paid for it, and that's that's one of the things we don't. You know, we tell people, you know, the 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 setup and takedown. That's part of the package. That's included in that time. That fee that we charge includes all that includes that fuel includes that travel includes the wear and tear in the van includes the maintenance includes you know cost of the equipment includes all the stuff and you need to include that when you're when you're that's why for pricing you always want to make sure that you yeah you profit is a good thing but are you making profit and that's where you got to look at it. hey you know what if your basic package Sometimes. is six hundred dollars is your cost six hundred dollars? Your cost five hundred dollars? Your cost three hundred dollars? What is your cost? And that's what you need to know before you walk out of the door. Anytime you want to know that, Mister DJ Fire Nathan, welcome, sir. I see you got well, a uh, co-host. I do. <laughs> this is Elsa. Hi, Elsa. She normally sits here on my lap while I'm doing stuff on the computer, unless Mike's here. And then for some reason, she don't like to be in here when Mike's here. <laughs> but well, how y'all doing tonight? She, she knows she Mike's can smell my puppy on me, probably. Uh, I was, let's see, where was I today? I had a dog licking on me today. She's probably smelling the dog. Now she's biting me. <laughs> so I got a dilemma, and I got a question for you guys. Um, and the dilemma I have is that I see yeah. once in a while, and I have coming up, um, we actually got to send the contract over for a, uh, um, it's it's the only non-wedding thing that we do. Uh, it's, a, it's a Christmas party. It's the same Christmas party because it's a friend I, I known since, you know, since high school. He's from my old neighborhood. And I do his company's Christmas party every year. It's the only non-wedding thing that we really uh, ever have in the books that we know we're getting. And um, I did last year, and I brought my big Yamaha mixer, which is a 16-channel mixer. I want to bring a small little mixer. I want like a four- or five-channel small mixer. I don't want Behringer. Mackie, I'm not a fan for. And Nathan, I know he tests a lot of equipment on his channel. It's you guys Behringer. know of a small little mixer that's, you know, at least two XLR in, double XLR out, uh, RCA, uh, hopefully for at least one uh, channel. And again, a four or five channel mixer that is not originally expensive, that is a good quality. Behringer, all the way. But yeah, Behringer has some pretty decent stuff for mixers. I've actually thought about getting a couple of their mixers. I'm, I'm uh, trying. The one, the one that I got, the little was it four or six channel, mm -hmm. uh, the little one that I got, I like it. I mean, it's it would have been cool if it would have had the RCA in and RCA out, so I could have used it to do 
my microphone and stuff for my computer. That's, uh, but it doesn't have, it just have ins, it doesn't have outs. So I need to be able to, you know, send the audio from that to my computer. But I mean, for doing little, you know, powered speaker setup, they seem to do pretty good. But yeah, I, I agree with uh, DJ Solstice. They, uh, I, I only, I, I like Behringer. So I, I've always been of the camp. You should never do XLR out. You should always do quarter inch to XLR. It's a bit cleaner sound. Um, I, cause I, I've tried the Yamaha, the Mackie and the Behringer head to head, all three best sound quality by far comes out of the Behringer. Um, they've got those hundred or 50, whatever years of British EQ technology. And it just, it has the cleanest sound. I didn't, I think the Yamaha was probably second. The Mackie was a little harsh sounding, uh, out of the highs. Um, I currently have a Mackie VLZ 804, maybe it's got three, that one's pretty feature packed. It was, I think 230 bucks. It's got three XLR inputs, two XLR outs along with quarter inch, dual quarter inch out, dual quarter inch control room or booth out and an aux send quarter inch out. So that one's probably the most feature packed, but if you're looking for something small with XLR out, the Yamaha has it. Um, I don't know which, I think the MG10, I think has two XLR inputs, but the Behringer I use now, my QX602 MP3 is perfect because it has two XLR inputs and an aux send and quarter inch outs, which the smaller Behringer doesn't have. I was trying, I was, I, I wanted to stay underneath, like underneath a hundred dollars because I want to show you something I have, I have sitting here just a few feet away from me that's cl actually collecting dust. Uh, I haven't used in a long time. Whoa, well, wow, focus there. <laughs> I haven't used in a long time. Is this is I know it's not 100 working. It's a Radio Shack mic mixer. Mm -hmm. It is nine volt battery powered. It does have a 12 uh, 12 volt input in the back. It's RCA out, RCA in. Um. And it's basically three channels, and then uh, channel four is oh I'm sorry, got the quarter inch in the front, RCA in the back in, as well as RCA out. The output is RCA. Uh, I haven't used this in years. Uh, it has the quick, uh, cool mono stereo switch across the top up here. Buddy, I don't know if you can see my screen if you're on your phone yes. or what you're doing, but uh check this company out this is the company actually they contacted mike to do a video too but they never did get back to him for some reason unless they haven't he just hadn't told me but no, um no, not yet. they contacted me uh two almost three weeks ago maybe longer did a video they're called uh how do you pronounce that mike you're, you're good at pronunciations <laughs> i'm not I, I, guy Hulu. 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 Yeah. Dude, hello. whatever. Okay, so I'll pull this out real quick. This is my new mixer for my, what do you call it? Um, your power, power, speaker, setup. power speaker setup. So here it is. Of course, this has got a little power thing that you plug in to give it power. Right up my studio lighting so you can see it better. Um, it's got two XLR outs. You can run those to your speakers. XLR quarter inch combos. Right here, you get all your setups. It has 16 channel processor, so you can change all your, your reverb and all that stuff. Um, I had it hooked up to one of those powered speakers that that Exton company sent to me. I was blown away by how much the you know how good it sounded. Uh, for and this is like, it has a it has a three band EQ for each channel. Yeah, it's got uh, high, mid, low. Yeah, high, mid, lows, and then an FX, and then your gain on the top, and then the bottom one has a uh, level. Now, I have an eight-channel mixer that's something like this. Uh, I used it at that outdoor wedding I did at the uh, state park. I'm actually selling with a flight case for, I don't remember what I have it on sale. So if you're looking for a cheap mixer, um, I can send you info on that, and I can ship it to you if you want. What's, um, what's, the, uh, what's the map price on uh, that mixer you have in your hand? 90 bucks yeah less than less than 100 bucks and is it, on the, uh, is it with the amazonians um i'm not oh, sure i'll remember yeah okay so it's yeah it's on, on amazon 
Okay. Yeah, they they sent me the money. It's ninety nine dollars right now. Okay. I'll send you the link. Thank you, sir. But uh, they were supposed to give me a, a coupon or a code for people to use to get a discount, but they never did send it to me. So I don't oh, know what man. they did. I need to contact and be like, hey, where's the link? But yeah, it's it's nice. It's got rubber feet on the bottom. It's it's heavy. Um, it's my new new uh, mixer for my stuff. So I just wish it would have had. It's got RCA ins, but not RCA outs. If it had RCA out, RCA outs, I would have used it to use for my boom mic. I would have got an XLR mic. This one's a U, uh, USB, but as you can tell with me and Mike's videos, it sounds decent. Oh so. yeah. And then uh, Matt, I know you uh, the Behringer. You use what do you use that for? You use that for your microphones, or you use that for? I use it for every. I, I've always since I started DJing, I've always gone RCA, dual RCA, into dual quarter inch out of my mixer. Even if the mixer had an XLR out, I've always done RCA just because it's. I, I always go into one channel with that, and then with, with what I have now, I'll put my wireless mic on one channel and my wired mic on the other. So I have something to speak in while people do toast and, and shit like that. So I don't have to go and get the mic, but, um, yeah, I use it for, it also just gives you, I mean, like I said, all, all my mixers, except for one have been RCA out. So it's not like I could connect into the speakers anyway. So I've always just run it to the mixer and then I've always, always done quarter inch to XLR. Um, I've always had quarter inch to XLR. I just, it's just the way I do it. Um, and uh, that way, if you need to go longer, you can run an XLR extension, but I just, I've always found, and I always use Pig Hog, uh, either Pig Hog or I don't like Hoses uh, RCA quarter inch to XLR cables um, or Amazon, like Pig Hog for some reason just has the best sound I've, I've realized and they don't fail. But they have a lot of insulation. And I, I will say that uh, the cables from Sweetwater, um, I, bet I got a few of those. And I'm very impressed with the Sweetwater brand cables. Um, Sweetwater, they do a lot of pro audio stuff. Their DJ area is like this much are their business, and they have all this, you know, for their you know pro audio stuff or bands and stuff. That's their primary focus is is bands. They really don't have a lot of DJs on their staff. I think they may have one guy. But most of the guys there are have bands or in bands or they deal with bands or deal with uh, schools or deal with uh, churches, and that's that's what they deal with primarily. But the 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 cables, I will say, you know, I, again, I I buy a lot of stuff from Sweetwater. I wish they had carried a few more brands, but the cables that I buy are Sweetwater branded cables. I actually like them. They're I don't have any problems with them sound wise, and they, they the hostess I understand the hostess sometimes. Can be hit or miss with some of their quality and they, they have a big name and they're you know if you go walk into guitar center or sam ash or you go to amazon hosa is uh you know a big name but i i feel there's a lot of other companies out there that do uh speaker cable xr cable that does a really good job that is worth it and you know um i really uh, like the ones they're, they're really good i like them too those and then if, if you have money, um, Mogami, uh, which is a Japanese cable maker, and they market under world's best cables. Those are some of the best. And and it sounds crazy, but I did a side by side test with that versus a standard XLR cable, um, both straight out of a, a set the same quarter inch. Um, I split it and went right and left. There's a noticeable, not notice, very slightly noticeable difference in the audio quality to where it's a little bit crisper out of the Mogami cable, just just a little bit. You know who you got to try? And I, I, I tried them and I actually have them because I wanted a white uh, speak on cables for my my because I my my J8s and to go from the top to the bottom of the unit, you have a speak on cable to go from the top drivers down to the su subwoofer but down below. And from the factory, RCF gave a black for uh cable and i can hide behind a pole and it look you know people don't see it but i wanted a white one so it's hard to find one i found a company who makes them and they have other cables they have xlr they have quarter inch they have they, they custom make cables and they're in your backyard they're called ghost cables hmm. um i'm sorry not ghost sorry because they're they're the signature as a ghost 
but Sari Cables. Mm. They're in California. And I found them uh, looking for white speak on cables. And they actually sent, uh, where do I have? Uh, don't tell me, Kelly. I think my granddaughter took it. Yeah, she took it. Um, they sent a really cool wooden, looks like a little ghost, but it's actually a quarter inch uh, cables, like for his mouth and stuff like that. But sorry, S-O-R-R-Y cables there in California. And I will tell you that, that I was very impressed. Their cables are not cheap. And they say they have the best cables, get the best materials, best equipment, the best connectors that money can buy. And they will custom make cables for you according to their website. So it might be something that you might want to reach out and talk to them. But I was very impressed with their cables too. Sweetwater is going to be a lower price point because they're, they're nice quality XLR cables. But if I really want to go higher end, I definitely would go back to, to Sari Cables. and they have, they have rainbow ones, perfect for Pride Month. There you go. Yeah. Rainbow XLR. There you go. But I was looking at Burger Standard, either black or white XLR. Man, those are, God, those are expensive. 40 bucks for a 10-foot XLR cable? But I run GLS cables. Yeah. GLS is another good brand. I run Hosa, yeah. mostly Hosa. Amazon Basics is perfect, by the way. I don't know. You know, there's nothing wrong with Amazon. <laughs> Yeah, well, again, it all boils down to what, what you're looking at, what you're doing. You know, do you need a most expensive musician's cable? friend? <laughs> yeah, I, I only use nice cables into my speakers if it's like connecting lights or a long extended run, like uh, Amazon Basics, or I, you know, sometimes found some like value packs from Mono Price back in the day, or you know, I mean, a cable they say. You know, cable is a cable. There's some, yeah, that there's a difference, but no, there's I mean, filtering. There's there's a lot yeah. there. Installation, and then those sorry cables. I I really Rick do. Web like did them. a video cutting them apart, like all the top brands. You know what I mean? And showing yeah. you exactly what the difference was in all of them. The sorry cables were really really cool. I really did like them. So, but it's coming to the time that we got to get off of here. It's already come up in the hour. Wow, this hour has gone by really fast. It's amazing, but. If you're watching this on YouTube, please <clears throat> go down, follow uh, Matt, DJ Solstice, follow Nathan, DJ Fire, DJ Mike James. Between their gig logs, their reviews, and everything else, follow them. Make sure you go over to their channels. Give them some thumbs up. Give them some likes. Give them some love. And again, if you're here on YouTube, make sure you go over to Twitch. Follow us on Twitch. You can go live. You can ask questions in the chat. On our day on Tuesday, we do a Tuesday and we start at 8 p.m. live central uh, time. And then we go till 9 p.m. central time. So that'd be, you know, nine o'clock in the East Coast. If you're out in California, well, that's basically, you know, at eight o'clock, it's six o'clock out, on, on, out in California, you know, on the West Coast. So it, it's one of the things that doesn't matter what time zone you're in, it's always there. But again, YouTube is going to do the replay and that's going to be on there next week. Guys, I can't thank you enough for coming in here. Matt, good seeing you again. Again, don't be a stranger. We love you, man. Come on. <laughs> it's always great having you here. Nathan, DJ Fire, thing. thank you for the information for that mixer. I appreciate that. And DJ Fire and Mike, and Mike James, they have a lot of reviews out there. And Mike has his tech channel, uh, doing his tech uh, stuff on uh, his channel. So he has a tech tips there. And I, I know, Matt, you kind of you do out. your gig logs, a little, little tech stuff. But I'd, lo I'd love to see you do a tech thing here and there, some of the stuff that you do behind the scenes, some of the magic that you do, that you pull off those great uh, weddings. And like well, before, all three of you guys have done some real great stuff. I know uh, uh, Fire just had a really great wedding. Uh, Mike, I got to watch your video on the Halloween party, but you know I always do. Yeah, Matt, you know I always watch your stuff. And it's, mm -hmm. I, I think uh, you guys are just killing it. What did you think of me? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to. What did you think of the big setup I did? I nice. thought that trussing was. I am like, wow, that was cool. All that trussing you had, I'm like, wow, that with, was that was cool. You could do without the starburst. The starburst. Yeah. Uh, the disco ball thing. Okay, I'm like, what? 
<laughs> whatever it was, Star they, Trek. They Harvard. actually requested that. That normally sits in the closet, but the rest um, looked cool though. I liked it. Oh, Mike fell out. All right, no, guys. Mike so out. Let's. All right. Again, if you haven't done so already, subscribe, click the like, click the follow. Make sure you put a comment, critique, criticism, anything you want to say down below. We want to hear from you guys. You guys got a question, put it down below, ask a question. And if I see a question on there, I will make sure that the next time we have the round table, we'll answer your question. You know, make sure you put it on there. You're, make, I'll see your name and ask the question, please. If you've done so already, go over to Twitch and follow it on Twitch. Other than that, guys, I appreciate, appreciate you guys out there watching. You guys have a good night.